Today on the menu, a poor man's Berkshire ham. We're going to actually take a cheap bologna and try and turn it into a holiday ham. Let's see how we do this. We're going to start with just a regular bologna chub. It doesn't have to be expensive, this one. If you can't find it in the chub, ask at the deli counter and they can usually cut you off like uh, an end piece of one of the deli meats there. Actually, I will say deli, the deli meat, bologna, is, it's an Italian meat, so it's bologna, and I had struggled with, what do I call it, bologna or bologna? It's, uh, bologna is kind of the American slang term for bologna. Uh, here's how you make the glaze to start things out with some brown sugar, you got some mustard, dry mustard, as hot as you like, some soy sauce, and some Worcestershire sauce. That and the brown sugar, it just makes it so the brown sugar in there makes it just great, and it makes it a true glaze where it's gonna brown on there just a little bit. Mix it up and try and reserve a little bit. You may wanna make extra because you can dip anything in this. It's really good. I do have the full recipe in my new book. You get the details on how to do up this book Maloney. Right in my new book, Smoking Meat 101. I got a huge breakdown on brisket. Try and make it really easy and fun. Not just brisket, but all sorts of different smoking meats as well. Check it out. I'll put a link in the description here on YouTube. So once the glaze is done, you got to carve this thing up. This is kind of, this is like the arts and crafts with whittling meat is what this is. So I'll try and make it quick. I just, in order to score it, I did the grooves about a quarter of an inch all along the length of it, all around first. And then I tried to spiral cut around in two, uh, two, two runs, spiral down the length of it. But in the end, you end up with what looks like a little bit ham-like. The nooks and crannies in the in the chub really help hold on to some of the glaze here. And if you get your grill a little bit hotter, it can you know char it a little bit up too. So I used a little bit of the glaze that I had left and topped it off there. You can rub it in as much or as little as you like. And then you're just letting it smoke at a low and slow temperature for a couple hours. After about an hour, I put a ham on there just to kind of have a comparison point too, but uh, I don't think we're gonna get quite like ham texture, but smoked bologna just has a nice familiar taste with it. So when you're shopping for the chubs, I would suggest shopping for what you had as a kid. And although like Oscar Mayer in my case wasn't there, a good substitute for Oscar Mayer was the Boar's Head Premium Bologna. Not beef, but pork. Pork just tastes a little bit, uh, tastes a little bit better. But it's amazing. This familiar taste, adding a little bit of smoke, just ends up being so good. I guess the origins of smoked bologna go somewhere to Oklahoma, because a lot of people call it Oklahoma Prime Rib or Oklahoma Tenderloin. But uh, I couldn't locate the exact uh, origins of it. But that's it, you're just putting it on there, you're smoking it, adding a little sauce maybe later on in the process, a little glaze as you go, and you end up with a beautiful tan loaf of bologna. And you can slice it, and you can uh, actually fry it later. You can put it in the refrigerator overnight, it'll actually continue to absorb some more of the smoke flavor overnight. But I like to just serve it up sliced with a little yellow mustard, or maybe some exotic mustard, more the glaze, or even a little bit of sauerkraut like I did with this one this weekend. There it is, smoked bologna, a recipe from a new book. I hope you like it, I hope you try it. A uh, little way to take a $5 bologna chub and turn it into close to a holiday ham. People love it. And for more tips, tricks, other fun stuff, and to find out about Smoking Meat 101, my brand new book, details at www.barbecuetricks.com.